Hey everybody, it's Patty here. This ain't got nothing to do with um, my work. Or well, maybe it does, but right now I am just in a high pissosity. I have been trying to purchase a vehicle, okay? Um, hi, Diane. Hi, Daphne. Um, I have been trying to purchase a vehicle for the last couple of weeks, I guess. And today, I was out bright and early. I was already in the street. And I got off the train. Hi, hi. I got off the train. And, uh... I said, you know what? I'm right here. There are all of these um, car dealerships up and down. You know, Sunrise Highway near where I live. Let me just walk over here. Chevy's having this, you know, sale, employee discount. We give you the same discount that uh, our employees enjoy. Okay, it's end of the year. Let's see. I go on. I'm walking past the, uh, they have a really big parking lot with a lot of different cars that, you know, on display. And like I said, it's early in the morning, so the guys are out there rinsing them off and uh, getting them ready, you know, and I guess too to try to sell them, but at least, you know, rinsing them off and whatever. So I saw this beautiful champagne-colored vehicle. It was an SUV. So I go over to it, and it only has 5,000 miles on it, and it's a 2015. What? This must be <coughs> kismet, right? So it's a, um... Let me get it right. Terrain. GMC Terrain. Terrain, I think that's what it's called, terrain. I knew it all a few minutes ago, but I just, I'm so di pissed off right now. I'm forgetting things. So anyway, I'm going to the dealership. I speak to, uh, I'm just looking around. Then the guy, I guess he's the main manager. He tried to, you know, help me with a couple of things. And then I told him, he asked me, had I seen anything I liked? And I told him about that car. So it's certified pre-owned vehicle. Okay, so he has a dealer that he's going to introduce me to, and he does. And uh, we went on a test drive in the vehicle. Um, it was all right. You know, I liked it. Didn't have a moon roof or anything. But for 5,000 miles, and it's only a 2015, who, who, you know, let's not complain, right? So now, I proceed to, um, you know, start to do the transactions. He says he wanted to put... Um, you know, take my credit card to put a little charge on it just to make sure that everything went through. Okay, we'll we'll give me that. He charges five hundred dollars on my account. Like he's freezing it, like I'm gonna be like living in a hotel or some shit. Or or you know, staying at at at, at the Hilton. All right. All right, so whatever. It goes through. I'm gonna have to spend it anyway because I had told him that these were my requirements. First of all, I wanted a um an SUV that had either all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, okay? I already own a Subaru, and I have a um, Ford Explorer, which I'm trying to replace the Explorer. But my Subaru, as much as it may be beat up physically on the, uh, you know, cosmetically, I I feel very safe with my kids driving that car, you know, in, in the winter and, and uh, the snow and things like that. And I allow my my daughter and my son, they are the ones that drive that more than I do. I used to drive it when I was working. But I'm, uh, you know, I use the, um, the Explorer now more, all right, because I really don't do a lot of driving and I'm home most of the time. So, you know, it's good for me to go here and there and here and there. Um, it's served its purpose. Um, I bought it a few years ago. I had a really good price to it. And it was not a problem because at the time when I was um, dealing with my son's father, he worked for Ford. I would never have purchased a Ford, and we've talked about that for years. And so the, um, I told him, I said, you know, this, this vehicle is on you, babe. And uh, if, you know, you are responsible for the upkeep and maintenance. Well, after he pulled his um, asinineness uh, about two years ago, that wasn't even a, 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 
issue anymore because, you know, I haven't seen him, haven't talk, spoken to him, and have no desire or intention to speak to him, you know, at all. He can deal with his son, but his son is grown, and there's no reason for me to deal with you anymore because you've shown yourself more than time and time and time and time again to be a cowardly asshole, and so I don't need to be bothered. But I also know that he knew that I would have never bought that Ford except for the fact that he was familiar with the vehicle. He found it at a really, he got it at a really good price because it was a co-worker, you know, type of employee, employee kind of thing, employment thing. Um, one of the people that he worked with, it was their car. Um, and he was familiar with it because he would do the maintenance and everything on it. So I trusted it. But it's really been acting really silly. Hey, Kev, has been acting really silly the last uh, six months or so, the last six months. And I, 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 I can't even, even if I were willing to put the money into it to, to, to salvage it, because it really is a nice car, cosmetically, um, it's not worth it. That's what all of the uh, maintenance people, the repair people have said to me. Okay, so I said I was going to get myself. A new vehicle. I could buy something new and finance it. I could lease something, which I really don't want to do because I don't like the idea of that. Or I could buy something used, but that's going to be worthwhile. So I have options, you know. Um, the guy that I bought my Subaru from, I could go back to him. Everybody who has uh, bought a Subaru from him has nothing but great words to say, including me. Okay, so... That's the other thing. But you have to go with him with cash, you know, and, you know, it's like a drug deal, you know. He's like, you got to give him cash underneath, the, 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 you know, in the car. and You know, it was, it was a lot. So try to avoid that, you know, because that's a big chunk. You know, you're coming up with $10,000 out of your bank account at the time. You know, first you're writing, you know, they want to ask you all kind of questions about where the money's coming from, where it's going. You know, and then I got to make sure that, you know, me and my son or whoever's escorting me isn't going to get mugged between the uh, teller's uh, <laughs> window and getting ready to go to the car to take the money to the guys. Anyway, moving on. Like I said, I made it very clear to, hey, Sandra, hey, Marsha, hey, Amanda, hey, Casey, uh, hey, Darnell, hey, McClamp, hey... Fitzgerald, hey Daphne again, and uh, hi Diane. So I was in a really good mood. So I said, you know, let's do this. Beautiful. This car is like a champagne. They call it sh champagne silver. Gorgeous, gorgeous. It, it was kind of even like a a blush, a peach. It was just great. But. Now, I, I, I know that I need to um, do some homework and whatever. So while I'm in the uh, dealership, I'm trying to get onto the Internet. And I get the password from them and the whole night. But for some reason, I can't connect for anything to try to check the um, VIN number or anything like that. Luckily, I have friends. And uh, I have a friend who was able to check where he was and see that the vehicle was good and that it was true. It only had 5,000 miles. Now, I had made clear to the, to the man I only wanted uh, a, a four-wheel drive, an all-wheel drive, and that I was not going to finance a maintenance package. I would pay for that separately, including paying for the license fees and, you know, DMV fees and all that. And they were like, really? Yeah. So there's like, you know, saying, okay, well, that's $2,000. Now, they say they'll take any trade-in, but then you just, ah, they're not going to really give you that much for the trade-in. So, you know, we won't even put that down. First fuckery. Okay, no problem. I'm still excited about this beautiful car. Got navigation. I've never had navigation. You know, this is all new stuff for me. Pretty roomy. So my friend is like, yay, this car is nice, you know, surprising. That's, you know, you can't beat that. 
But you know this car is not a four-wheel drive. It's front-wheel drive. Eh, what? So that's two-wheel drive instead of four-wheel drive. That's front-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive. We live in, this, in, in, in the, um, the East Coast, Northeast Coast. It's, it snows here, you know. I'm not trying to do that. So, I had already gone as far as, you know, going in to see the financier and they're trying to do the deal. So, I jump up and run into the financier's office. I was like, eek, stop it, the presses. Hey, Steve, stop the presses. Um, we are not going to be able to go through this deal because this car is a uh, two-wheel drive. And I specifically asked and spoke to my um, dealer, as we were in the vehicle doing the test drive all the way down Sunrise Highway and back, about how much I wanted to have an SUV that had four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive because I already owned a, a, a Subaru. And I was very concerned that whenever my children, if they were going to drive my vehicle for any reason, that it would be a safe bet. Now, that's my feelings as a mother. That thing, you know, maybe he wouldn't or wouldn't agree, but that's not the point. The point is I'm the customer, right? So now, the financier is like, what? You know, and he, oh, yes, I agree with you, I, 100%. And so here comes Mr. Um, dealer looking all poor mouth, like, oh, he didn't know that. Oh, he thought it was, oh, they fooled him too. How come everybody, y'all are fooled, but my friend down, who is not a dealer, who's, you know, in their office doing their work and they happen to pull this up, how come he saw it? Anyway. Now, at that point, some folk, including me, should have gotten up and said, uh, good day, gentlemen, and walked out. But I had been there since 10 o'clock, and at this point, it was 2 in the afternoon. So, I said, let me go out here and see if there's anything else that I like. Cause they have a lot of cars. And they're supposed to be having this Chevy, you know, employee event. You buy and we'll give you our same employee discount. Every, every customer, no matter what. Okay, so, that's, that's a good deal. It's the end of the year. My cousin had told me Chevy's a good, whatever. All right, all right. So, now, I come upon... Uh, Chevy Equinox and it had 23,000 miles and it was a 2014 still not bad because that means that there are less than 10,000 miles per year because at the end of this year it'll have been a three year old car right so it's good it has a moon roof yay had, uh, I think it was a Pioneer um, music. Better. Better than Subaru. So, anyway. The best is Nissan, but that's a whole nother deal. Nissan has Bose, but um, this car had Pioneer, and Pioneer is great. So that's good. Had Moonroof, which the other car didn't have. Very roomy. And this with leather, leather seats. Black inside, black outside. So this whole car is black, and it's got leather seats. It has OnStar. It has, um, you know, the telephone that you can, uh, hands-free. Just all little bells and whistles. It's got the uh, extra tire, but the tire that's in the back is a temporary tire. They don't even give you a real tire. All right, whatever. But it's underneath the uh, carpeting in the back, and you can push the the... It seats five, so the second row, each of the seats can move back and forth independently, either to lean down to create more storage space or more um, carry space, or to push back to give you more leg room for your passengers. That's fantastic because I got tall people around me. My daughter's almost six feet. My son is like almost six, two and a half, six three. My grandchildren, um, who will be 12 years old on the 31st, New Year's Eve, 
they're very tall already, and they're only, uh, they're still little, you know. They're still young, so I know that they're going to have some room to grow because I know who their people are, right? And my daughter, like I said, she's almost six feet tall herself. And, you know, the people I tend to go out with, the guys I get tend to see tend to be at least six feet tall, if not five eight, five nine. But, you know, when a person is like six three, six four, it can get a little tight in some of these cars. So even if he'd had got to sit in the back, at least I know he would have a comfortable seat, you know, in the vehicle. So this is this is good. I'm all happy. And I've made it also clear to these folks since this morning that I'm not going to finance a maintenance package. I have money that I'm willing to put down, but I'm this is supposed to be a certified pre-owned car, meaning that in my in my opinion, in my estimation, my understanding, and maybe I'm not a car dealer, you know, I don't know these things. But if you tell me something is a certified pre-owned vehicle, that means that you're guaranteeing me that I don't have a, a lemon. That if anything is going to go wrong with this car in a certain amount of time, or at least until the warranty is up or whatever, that you, the dealership, the manufacturer, whomever, is going to take responsibility for this. Apparently, in the world of dealerships, it means that we're going to sell you a maintenance package and we're going to add that to your the price of your vehicle and then we're going to charge you interest on that along with the interest that we're charging on financing the car. No. Mm -mm. So I choose not to participate in that. And I say, whatever it is, I'll pay that up front along with the licensing and tag fees. I don't think that this is unclear. I don't think that this is confusing. It may baffle them because this is how they make their money. But I'm still taking out a loan. The price listed... For this vehicle is $18,898. And it's a 2014. Okay. So if I say, I'm going to, this is the price that's listed. I'm not even haggling with them about it yet at all. But the, I'm going to put down this amount of money. And I'll even pay for the um, maintenance package up front. Okay. And and the fee, fees for the tags and the, and the licenses. All right. Well, apparently, they didn't understand how serious I was about what I had said. So now we're on the second car on the same day. The same dealership, the same dealer, the same financier. And when I go back at the end of the night, when the place, the service station is almost closed, service guy, I asked him, you know, was my car back there getting, you know, cleaned out or whatever? And he was like, mm, no. They had to put the license plate on, even though I told them that I had plates and that I would, um, just transfer my plates over because I just re-registered them in like September. That seemed to get garbled somewhere in it. And I said, you know, okay, whatever. So I, I was going to have to get new plates and take these plates back to DMV tomorrow. All right, Patty, you've been playing these plates for quite a many years now. They're starting to get curled at the edges. They're still orange and black. You know, just stop. Okay. It's not a big deal. Now, the dealer has been avoiding me like he has a little attitude ever since the first car. All right, after we finished taking the second, the, the test drive in the second car, he was acting a little hostile. Not hostile, but just like a little, uh, shall I say, bitchy. Okay. Like his feelings were hurt or he was offended like I had been wasting his time or some shit when he actually misrepresented the vehicle. 
Now, I'm even willing to say that it was a it was something that he didn't realize. I, I'm even really willing to give him that. That's why I said, well, let's look at something else. Because maybe this, this, this car has gone from three or four different dealerships in Jersey and in Massapequa and then um, two more in, in Long Island or whatever. Baldwin even. So what it is is that no one is buying. the only. It only has 5,000 miles because the only places it's been driving are from dealership to dealership because... And people taking test drives in it, but nobody wants to buy it because it's a two-wheel drive vehicle. And this is the Northeast. Okay, so I wasn't... I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt that he didn't do this on purpose just because he's trying to make a sale. And again, you're supposed to have this Chevy end of the year event where all customers, no matter who, are supposed to be able to enjoy this employee discount. And they don't tell you what the employee discount is either. Apparently, it's nothing. <laughs> but I digress. So, now, he's weaseled away somewhere. I've said goodnight to the financier. He doesn't have the, the, the contract in front of him either. They are... Uh, at this point... A young lady who I've never seen the entire day. Um, she's the closer, I guess. So she came. And I said, I said oh, so you're the closest? And I was realized that this, the dealer himself is, is just scared of me, I guess. Or he's just so fed up that he just can't tolerate it. And uh, so she puts the paperwork out in front of me. She says, you know, the plates are there and this and that. And you have to turn your other plates in tomorrow. I said, okay. And so she puts this contract in front of me and I look and this card has started off at $18,898,000 is now $28,000. So like almost $10,000 more. What? For... How could that be? <laughs> How could that be when I'm already putting down $4,000 in order to cover the maintenance package and the license plates and tags? How is that? So now I'm like, you know what? Sorry, ma'am. This is not you, but I'm not doing this. I'm looking at these numbers. I'm like, what? What? So now, he he comes from wherever he is. He he overhears it. Because he's been standing somewhere so that he could, you know, just waiting for me to finish the sale so he could finish popping his bubbly, I guess. Oh, oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe He's not huffing and puffing. I was like, you can't believe this. He said, oh, I've wasted, all my, you know, I'm losing money here. Excuse me? This is my money we're talking about. This is my money. You're going to give me this crazy interest rate and then say that I should pay interest on a maintenance package and tax from the state of New York license plates for a period of uh, 68 months or 64 months or 72 months. And you got an attitude? And where's the employee discount that uh, Chevrolet's end of the year sale is supposed to be? Give it up. Oh, I, what? You know, that's the internet price. That's, well, what the fuck? Is, what, what? What? What do you mean that's the internet price? What does that mean? Does Does that mean that only people who do the entire transaction on the internet and 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 never come into the showroom and never test drive the car and don't sit down and talk to you or or do any financing to everything is done on the computer that that's their price? But for the rest of us who get up off our asses and go into the dealership. Do you get to charge us more? And why am I paying for you to guarantee me that the car that you're selling me is not a lemon? I don't know. Maybe it's a girl thing, but I know this has happened years ago when I went to buy my Pathfinder. Same kind of bullshit. Internet was not even as, you know, available as it is now. And I came in with the money to pay for the maintenance fees and 
the, the, um, the tags very clearly, gave them a uh, bank check and all nine yards. And when I went to look at the the financier's computer, I got a chance to see his screen and I saw that this bitch, excuse me, was adding those fees right back into that contract and I would have been paying for that those charges that I had specifically said I was not going to do. Not that I wasn't going to pay for it, I was, but I was going to just pay for it outright and finance the rest of the car. In that case, years ago, with the Pathfinder, I had already given them a, a, a bank check, so I had to act. You know, I had to, to, to just hold my ground and, and insist that I was not leaving until I had my check in my hands, and I didn't care if they had to go get the owner of the car dealership from his house, wherever he lived, and bring him to me if that was the case. But that was not going to, I was not going to let them get away with that. Now those were um, back, it, and it doesn't matter about them being black or white or anything like that. Because they're, they were all represented in both of these scenarios. But they were all men. And I'm not even holding that on them because I know that car dealers... It's a whole different thing. It's, it's, it's a special kind of evil. Yes, and, they, and, and I understand that this is how they make their money. They, they have a commission. You know, maybe they get salary. But I dealt with this a few weeks ago at another dealership at Millennium in Valley Stream. Game playing. And especially when they see you come in there and you're a woman and they try to, not that they don't try to play everybody, they do. But when they see that you're a woman by yourself, they really try to, you know, razzle dazzle you. I'm not impressed. I, I drove these kind of vehicles every day at work for 20 some years. So I really didn't, um, I'm not impressed with that part of the, you know, I would love to have had that car. I really do would have liked it. Just like I really would have liked the Jeep that I had looked at a few years ago. But you know what? I'll get rid of it. Because you know what? As long as this car can sit in my driveway because the insurance is paid and the tax is registered to 2019. And I can take an Uber anywhere I got to go if I really needed to. I also own another car. My name is on another title of another vehicle. And if I want to... My son comes home from work. He he uses the car all day. If I got somewhere I need to go that bad, I can pick up those keys and I can walk out that door and drive that car anywhere I want to drive it because it's mine too. So I'm not desperate. But I'm not, not, not going to let you play me because you think, oh, well, she really wants a car and she's going to go for this. Did I not get up and walk out of that dealership? No offense to the young lady that they had, you know, sent to uh, present me with this bullshit and thought that I was just going to say, oh, okay. Mm-mm. No. I, you know, apologized to her. She said she had nothing to do with this. And I walked the hell out, walked right back over to the train station where I had started and got in the cab. And the cab driver brought me home. And it's just another day in paradise. I called my bank, told them to block the charge, which they said that they would. They were surprised that they had put in a $500 charge initially this morning to just test to see whether or not I had a, an account or whatever they thought they were doing. Well, they're going to take care of it and the money will be returned to my account. And I, I really am sad about that because I really did want that. But no, not no. Mm -mm. So my sister, you know, she's telling me to go to CarMax, CarMax, CarMax. I'll, I'll check. But like a friend of mine said, it, whatever cars are left on the lot, at the end of the year, they're going to have to take, pay taxes on. At least this is what has to happen as of this year. Who the hell knows what luxuries they're going to be enjoying from now on after that stupidity, that tax break that all the rich people get. 
But I don't even know if that would affect them. It, it may affect the, 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 the big bosses a little, but it's certainly not going to really affect the regular workers like us, you know, the regular people. Whatever. And while I was there, I was there all day. They got Christmas bonuses today. So they were, all the stuff they were saying on TV, I saw it on the news. Oh, all these uh, CEOs of all these corporations were giving these Christmas bo- these bonuses out of nowhere. And Trump is like, this has never happened before. And this is because every year people get Christmas bonuses, man. What the fuck are you talking about? This is not nothing new that you just thought up. They may feel guilty. And for the majority of Americans, even I believe the ones who are in maybe the 5% or maybe the 10%, they think that this shit is wrong. Everybody knows it's wrong. But this is not about them. This is about this. So I'm saying you have to stand your ground. Um, I don't want, I didn't want to get on here and disparage them too much. That's why I didn't call their names. But. I think I made reference to dealership. But it doesn't matter. Because it, it's not just them. Like I said, it was another one a few weeks ago. And I will be on my hunt for a vehicle. And I know that I will get what I'm supposed to get when I'm supposed to get it. Because that's the way God works for me. And I'm going to do my my end. I ain't asking none of them to give me nothing. I got the money for it. But don't 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 play games with me. Don't don't do that. And don't do that to other people. We are tired of the bullshit. Okay? We already see what y'all are about. And especially as women, we're not doing it no more. It's not no longer that type of party, boys. So be upfront. How is the car almost ten thousand dollars more than it was on the internet? Where's the employee discount? Where's all the coupons that you were supposed to be giving me and this and that and that and the other? You know what? Go scratch. Goodbye. Go buy. If I got to get on a bus and go to Pennsylvania or Virginia or somewhere, North Carolina or whatever, and buy a car, come up here and register it in New York, then that is what I will do. And I will be more than glad to go back and, and revisit this exact same vehicle. If they were to do the right thing, because it was a lovely vehicle. But there are a whole bunch of nice vehicles out there. I've been driving in this world since I was like 27 years old. And I have had a few cars. And I could take the money that I was going to put down on this and, and create a car note for myself. And I could go somewhere and buy a vehicle and just let that live for another two or three years. And then buy it something brand new again. Yeah. Or like I said, I could be Ubering and light light lighting it, you know, bumming rides or driving my other car until the cows come home. I just wanted to get this off my chest. I didn't want to let it just continue to fester in me and I wanted to share it. Because maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Somebody may want to correct me on some misconceptions I have. But if I'm not, I want to make sure that my friends and family, my people, those who support me and who I support, pay attention to what's going on out here when they go to make these kind of purchases. I'm not one of these people who feel that I got to have a new car and this and that. I, I really don't. If I came into a whole bunch of money, a car would not be the first thing I would think to, to purchase. It would be... Uh, property or, or uh, invest in something, you know, artwork or, or uh, a home, a, a, a condo, or put some money away for my grandchildren's education, that kind of stuff. Cars would not be, you know, like, I got to have this so I could show off how m- much of a millionaire I am. Eh, no, that's not important. But for the um, convenience and the utility of it, you know, knowing that I could just pick up and feel like I could go and visit my mother or, or whatever like that. I like to be able to have that um, option. But I am not. I shall not. I shall not allow myself to be taken advantage when I'm the customer. 
the customer's supposed to be always right. When did this shit stop? When did when did it did it flip? Oh, when we started getting money that we could spend. Anyway, folks, I'm just venting, and I think look at it. Um, and Merry Christmas, Daphne. Daphne had a um her 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 sister passed away yesterday, and so we're going to be praying for for Daphne. But I'm just not right. This this is just like regular ranting, and um, I don't want to m- m- mix that into that because. Daphne and her sister both deserve more than this foolishness. So I just was getting this off my chest. And this has nothing to do with my work and my readings and my tarot cards and all of that. And I'm not wishing no bad luck or nothing on anybody. All I'm saying is that, come on, y'all. Come on. Let, let's, let, let us little people try to look out for each other. Because we already see who's not looking out for us at all. All right? And stop it. You can make a sale. You don't have to try to uh, jerk your customers while you're doing that. All right? So anyway, I will talk to you all later. Uh, probably not tonight because I'm, I'm very tired. But I, gotta, I spent a whole day not doing my, my readings. And I still have readings to get up for uh, the other six signs. So... I'll try to get that done tomorrow because I know Monday is Christmas and I really wanted this to be done before that. But I had an opportunity to uh, spend some time in the city yesterday and I uh, had a wonderful time connecting with my divine masculine. <laughs> and it was all right. It was cool. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. We'll see how I feel. Don't expect it. Pray for me. All right. And... uh if anybody has something that they can add to this about, you know, something I'm missing, you know, maybe there's a perspective that I don't have about this situation with the cards, please, please, please feel free to share. All right? Anyway, I love you guys. Have, if I don't speak to you again, you know, have a good Christmas, a New Year's, and Kwanzaa. Um, uh, hopefully, will this situation will be rectified. All right? I thank you guys for letting me vent. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.